Good morning everybody. Um, welcome to Smooth Friday. It's the 31st of July, the end of July. I can't believe that we're kind of halfway through the year and it's been very, very difficult beginnings to the year. <clears throat> On Wednesday's live video, I promised you all that my smile would be restored to its former glory as I had a dental appointment. Well, it didn't really happen. I, I did get to the dentist, but they'd had problems too. And anyway, to cut a long story short, some of the treatment was completed. So I've got kind of some of my smile back, but uh, not quite the smile I anticipated and I would show you. But at least the chip at the front was fixed, so part smile. Anyway, as this is number 80 in my live video series, I decided to call it Smooth Friday, giving you tips maybe on how to make your days go smoothly, um, particularly during these difficult times, which it seems are even more difficult because of the uncertainty. And I think it's, like in anything, it's uncertainty sort of gets us worked up. We kind of really need to know what's happening and uh, so that we can maybe prepare and plan. Anyway, first of all, I think that lots of us do like routines. But if your routine is broken, um, you'll maybe go through or, or you will go through sort of a, um, getting frustrated, getting into a frenzy. You'll get even angry at yourself. Now, what you have to remember is that you can't actually control everything. There will be some times, even often times, with something that happens to interrupt your routine, this finely tuned routine that you thought everything would go smoothly. So what? Well, don't worry about it or don't over worry about it. It's, if it's something you can't control, you need to let go. Try and get yourself back on track again later or even tomorrow. What you should do while waiting uh, on you know while waiting to get things back on track take a break by that I mean yourself I mean just giving yourself even a moment or two take three deep breaths that realigns your thinking your mind and your body these breaths energize you and calm you remember it's the deep breaths the deep breathing from the diaphragm not the short, sharp shoulder intake, which kind of make you even more anxious. So take three deep breaths and it will energise you, but it also calms you. And when you're calm, you will be more focused and ready to concentrate. And in fact, you'll be more effective and even efficient. So when you change your mindset in this way, your days will go more smoothly. You'll be able to cope with interruptions, challenges, even turning these challenges into opportunities. And you'll be happier, you'll be calmer and more energised. One way of making your days go smoothly is to create a routine that kind of fits you. It's a day in a, creating a routine in your day in such a way that you are calmer and it's even more predictable. So you're kind of ready for changes. You may think that when you have routines every day, everything will go smoothly. And of course, that's what you aim for. You really want a smooth sailing day. But of course, routines can also help make you calm. But then if your day is interrupted and you're not ready to cope with that, um, you should find ways of adapting that routine. It's not having the ability to adapt and can make you, it can upset you even more. So to be able to adapt a situation and adapt your routines, you need to be resilient and have courage to do this and not just fall apart at the first sign of problems. I know the weekdays have all been kind of morphing into the weekends, but you should still try to be maybe as productive as possible, making the weeks different from the weekends. So during the week, it means that if you've planned them carefully, you can relax more at the weekend and it gives you a sense of normality or maybe. When you plan carefully and focus, now remember my FA, you know, my full attention on things, focus, then you'll be more productive, more focused and able to attend and deal with any challenges. Of course, if you're also passionate about what you do, then you have more energy and able to deal with anything. So, 
how do we get things to go smoothly? Well, the first thing is, uh, and this is a tip probably given by lots of people, you need to have um, sleep and be rested. Now, sleep's a huge topic. I get many people saying to me, oh, I, I can't sleep, I haven't slept, I don't know how long. You know, there's so many, so much advice on you need eight hours, you need nine hours, oh no, you need five, etc. Well, <clears throat> it's something that a sleep has been something that I haven't, I don't need a lot of, as long as it's really good sleep. So I think everybody is different. Maybe you don't need these eight hours um, maybe you need more, maybe you need rest, you know, less rest. So I recommend that if you go to bed and you can't sleep, then I would just get up. I would get up and maybe, um, now don't switch the TV on or electrical things, but I would say sit down with a, maybe a hot drink, maybe not the hot toddy, not alcohol, but a hot drink that uh, kind of just uh, kind of fills your body with heat and maybe read a book. Or you could do a sort of short meditation. Um, sometimes uh, I think I've gone to bed late because I'm a kind of night person. And I think, oh, I haven't had a lot of sleep. But during this, particularly during this pandemic, I've found myself, if I'm resting during the day, I've actually not just had a power nap, but I've actually fallen asleep. So in fact, I've probably had more sleep than I think, rather than just during the evening. It's like everything else, we're all different. So try not to over-worry. Um, I would say that if you've got medical reasons, of course, then you should seek professional help. But for most of us, try and find something that works for you. So when you're getting enough sleep or rest, I mean this not to burn the candle at both ends and not drinking lots of coffee so it keeps yourself awake and you've got that kind of false energy. And as I say, I'm a night person, so you might be too. Some people like working during the day, they're early risers. Some people are late, um, late bedders and they work better later at night. So try and find something that fits you. So, and again, if you don't find it easy to fall asleep, find something, identify what works for you. One thing I would say you definitely need to practice is not having electrical equipment, electrical gadgets, TVs and everything in the bedroom. Yes, I mean TVs, phones, computers, and we all do it. We have them. They're always to hand. Now, you really shouldn't have that kind of, um, well, certainly not on. You shouldn't be having these on if you're in the bedroom. Um, try not to watch them. I mean, I know people who... They work very hard during the day, lots of emails come in, and actually I know that some of them want to respond to the e these emails during the night. I mean, it's <laughs> you need to, I'm thinking of like when you say to children, no screen time or limit your screen time, take that advice yourself. But don't start responding to emails all night, every night, during the night. And... Stop, is what I see. And this is this is difficult. There's a story here because I remember um, when the internet, when everybody in offices was using the internet and it was stopped postage and letters, um, the internet has positives and negatives. The positives mean that things are more readily available to us. But the negatives I found when I was speaking to people is that as soon as like an email come in, and I'm as uh, guilty of this as anyone else, you think you've got to respond to it right away. It's this immediacy. And if you don't, you think, oh, you know, somebody's going to say I haven't responded to that. Just remember back to if a letter came in, you'd have time to open it, you'd have time to read it, and then you'd think about how you were going to respond, and then write the letter back or type the letter back. It's just, it's getting ridiculous. And one thing to remember is, I would say never respond to something in haste, no matter kind of what it is. For effective communication, I suppose it's a, in a sense a bit like my four steps. Focus, think about what it is. Um, acknowledge, you could even respond to the email right away to say, got your email have to give some thought to this and then clarify. You might have another email to clarify and then respond. And so it goes round again.
because I think we're very guilty of firing something off right away, particularly if it's an email that's maybe upset us. And I've had them and now I've learned what I do is I actually take away the um to the address address to the person, the email, I take it out. So if inadvertently I click the enter button or the send button, it doesn't go off. It comes up with a reminder you need to put in a recipient. And that has saved me quite a lot of times because then I've realised, oh, I forgot this point or I, I didn't interpret maybe their email in the best way possible. So just think about that and take time. Emails, yes, they're a quicker way of perhaps everything, but they're not the best way. So just take time. And again, it's not about over worrying. To have a smooth D, um, you have to identify kind of what works for you. Think about how much time you need to do what uh, in order to wind down. What do you do um, before bed? I like using my mind bites or, um, and I think I found this through Dave. I see he's on just now. Thanks very much, Dave. But is it Kevin McCormick? I found his... A poems and his beautiful, it's an Irish voice, it's just lovely, um, calms me. So anything kind of meditative and that isn't too long, that's why I designed my mind bites because they're just enough that they can relax you, they're short enough and you hear my soothing voice. Well, I know this because people say they like my voice. So maybe Scottish and Irish voices, we've got a nice look to it. And of course, in mine, there's lovely calming music. I don't use the whooping birds and the dolphins, just calming, relaxing music. So when you're ready, um, when, when, when you're ready to sleep or you can fall asleep with these, you will get better rest. And of course, when you get better rest, you'll get up in the morning ready to take on the day with energy. So the next thing to remember, because to have a smooth day now, now we're in, up during the day, you need to take breaks. Yes, I know there'll still be emails and you might have answered during the wee small hours. Just forget all of that. They'll still be there. So don't get yourself overwhelmed. But when you're waking up in the morning, kind of try and go into a more smooth thought for the day. Don't, you'll have lots of things to do, maybe in your routine, the dog needs walked, the uh, the children need taken to school, maybe when it's school times, there's lots of things you need to do and it's cold and it's wet and you maybe don't want to do it. So if you've been going out to work as well, or even if you're staying at home, you should maybe plan all these things, maybe the night before, about what you're going to do, maybe what you're going to wear. Do everything so that there's less stress when you're waking up. The weather here in Scotland, of course, is so changeable and all over perhaps that you could look out an outfit for the morning. You know, if you look it out in the evening, something nice to wear in the morning, you realise that it's torrential rain and you'd have to change your mind. But if you leave, if you're more organised for things you do now, one of the other things I think you should do is have things you use every day, like your keys, your diary, um, put them where you can find them. And of course, I've been guilty of this as well. In fact, I was just remembering um, I, I, my phone, of course. I used to have a landline, don't have that now. And you would phone your phone to find out where it is. That's all very well if it's not on silent. The other thing I found about keys is I was getting, did get myself into a bit of a tizzy because I couldn't find my keys. And I do have a place I put them. And I thought, well, I must have been distracted. So um, I phoned round a few people to say I'd have left the keys at their house. And, and of course, I opened the door. Where were they? In the door. So I'd left them in the outside of the door. So that was not a good thing to do. But try and have everything in its place and you'll get less stressed. Make decisions the night before. And I've often talked about this, a lot about writing out lists. And I'm not particularly keen on um, list writing, but that's because we tend to write unrealistic lists and then we get ourselves overwhelmed, we get ourselves into a tiz tizzy. You look at this to-do list and it's like you're so overwhelmed, you might never even start. So have a to-do list that works for you. It can be very satisfying as well. 
ticking off things as you do them. But don't beat yourselves up. If you don't finish or don't complete everything, remember I, I do this as well and I often do longer lists than I know I'm going to get through. But by the end of the night, if I've done two of the things, I just praise myself. Like, well, these are the two things I was meant to do. And of course, it's just when you feel organised, you when you get up, you'll be more energised um, to start anything. And you can use your computer for your to-do list or a pen and paper. I still quite like pen and paper, but I'm a bit of a, um, I don't know what you could see. Uh, I, I keep a computer diary and a hard copy diary, which I think is beside me here. Um, my diary, which actually I found, I got this from a friend. It's Dream, Believe, Create. So that's a wee reminder to me every day, Dream, Believe, Create create but what I've got to remember is that I, I align both the computer diary and the hard copy diary <laughs> and remember to check it or ensure maybe if it's a computer that your alarm is on we story here um, I had a, a zoom call or a team meeting call uh, last week and the alarm didn't go off but the person phoned me and said are you okay and I said oh I said, my alarm didn't go off. I'm really sorry. So don't beat yourself up if you miss something. I think another thing to do there is just to apologise and accept that you made a mistake because people respond to that. So relax, breathe, and things do work out. Now, here's my repeat, repeat again. Taking breaks when you need them. This sounds easy, but I know that when you're focused on something, and I do this, particularly the computer, when you're focused on something and you get really into it, you don't want to take a break. Particularly because if you do take a break, when you come back to it, I feel as if I've almost got to start again. Where was I? Go back a bit. Um, and you think you're kind of duplicating the work. But actually, sometimes, you know, that's also helpful because you find that what you've actually written, you maybe want to change. So taking a break is not just sitting at your computer, maybe having a sandwich. You really should get up, walk around, move around. I think go into another room or better still walk outside. The beauty of nature is just amazing because when you change where you're sitting where you're working it changes your perspective and actually if you've particularly if you've hit a problem that you can't solve or you're getting really um frustrated and overwhelmed by it if you just take a break move outside think about something else maybe even take a deep breath and do one of the quick mind bites but you will be inspired and you'll often be inspired enough that a solution appears. You end up with a solution to that problem. So practicing, I think, when it's taking a break, I would practice the ABC, have an affirmation. I take a break, your deep breaths, and just, you could close your eyes for a minute or two, or as I say, go out into nature, look at the clouds. I'll be doing the floating feather later. So just look at things that are around about you. And you will feel better, you'll be calmer, less anxious, less overwhelmed, and you will improve your mental and physical well-being. So to sum up, how do things go smoothly? How do we make things go smoothly? Particularly if you've got ambitious plans. And I think we all maybe have, we've been trying to create these ambitious plans during this lockdown and during the pandemic. And the... Uh, it even seems now that we thought we were coming through things and now there's a lot more uncertainty. There's a lot of anxiety about. So <clears throat> I would always lay a secure foundation, making a list of what you need, what resources are necessary. That's materials, it's items, even people. And then don't get overwhelmed by the huge plan. Yes, please have ambitious plans. Have your achievement board, your inspiration board or whatever. But when you look at it, don't get overwhelmed. If it's something big, then break it down. Break down the, the huge plan into manageable parts. And when you do that, you can then set a timetable. Now, don't beat yourself up. 
I've said this before and I'll say it again. Don't beat yourself up if you don't complete within your timetable, as there will be things you can't control. And that's when you must be resilient and have the courage to adapt your plans and see all the changes, these challenges, as opportunities. And when you do this, you'll actually have less uncertainty because you'll be able to, if something uncertain comes up, you'll be able to adapt. And of course, if you're working with others, everyone else involved needs to know what they're doing and it's so that you're all moving in the same direction. And I think that's the difficulty that we're having just now. Um, you know, if we've got England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, we're all moving at different paces, different ways, and you're left with a lot of uncertainty. And I think this is ringing a bell in these difficult times that we're living in. There's so many messages. Changes are happening at the drop of a hat and we're not really prepared. Well, we can be because the only thing I can see, if you're not able to control everything, have a contingency, have a plan as best you can and then adapt. Now, I know people took off maybe for their holidays and then they were stuck out in Spain or they have to come back early. Now, you can't blame people. They did want to get away. We've been in lockdown for so long. But part of me thinks that maybe there should be something that says to us, I need a contingency plan here. What if? Now, I've often said we shouldn't think of the what ifs, but maybe this is a time when we need to. What if that happens? What if this happens? And particularly if your finances, if it's a difficult time for finances, then there may be losses there. Now, I know that the government, everybody said, oh, employers have to be reasonable, maybe the holiday companies, insurance companies. But I would say you maybe can't just rely on them. You need to rely on your own adaptability and flexibility. So remember, you don't just live once. So learn to live life every moment of every day. You only die once. So here's to smooth days lived with passion and energy. And no matter what happens, I feel in life that if you're kind, if you're grateful and keep that smile on your face, it costs you nothing. Then today for the affirmations, I would say you should have Something like, be grateful, or I am grateful. Be kind, I am kind. And the Mind Bites meditation I'm going to do, as I say, is the floating feather. The floating feather brings a sense of calm, and I think we need that in these times. So it's just, I wish I, I, wish I could kind of, implant something in everybody that they can have this sort of positive attitude um, because you can change things but only change yourself you can't change others so remember the meditation we've got to my mind bites they're short um, I put up these YouTube uh, there's these bit live videos that are on the YouTube channel um, but we'll go into the floating feather just now and remember back straight you've got to have that sort of spine straight and as if somebody's pulling your head up to the ceiling so you've got that straightness but still a sense of positive confidence and of course your feet on the ground now we're going to take the deep breathing just a reminder it's from the diaphragm so when you breathe in through the nose your tummy goes out hold and then when you exhale through the mouth the tummy goes in and you're exhaling that tension and anxiety it's leaving your body so if we close our eyes just now i'm going to do the floating feather now this helps you to feel calm it can focus you and when you're calm and focused you really will be more creative so Imagine a soft white feather. You watch this fluffy feather slowly floating down. You are aware of how delicate and fine it is. 
you feel a sense of lightness. Your mind is calm. Your body is calm. Imagine how delicate and fine this soft white feather is. You feel more aware. You're not just aware of the feather, but you are aware of yourself. Now take a deep breath in. Hold. And as you exhale, let a sense of calm wash over you. Let all that tension and anxiety Leave your mind and body so that you have this sense of calmness all around. Now slowly open your eyes and say your affirmations. I feel positive. I am more aware of everything around me. I feel a sense of calm. I'm ready to Take on the day smoothly, but with energy. And then, of course, shuggle your shoulders and yawn or stretch your arms. And these you should have within seconds just a feeling of being more positive. That's what these are about. And of course, remember, the smile costs you nothing. Laughter is the best medicine. Now, this is number 80 and it's Friday and I was calling it Smooth Friday to take you into the smoothness of the weekend and I hope it is a smooth weekend for you. Um, I've decided, now I'm thinking that, I'm not sure, I might go back to doing three a week because there's still a lot of uncertainty around, but I've decided I won't do three live videos a week. I'm going to do one per week. You know, it's maybe too much of a good thing and people will be, please come back, please come back. I don't know. But I'm going to try possibly for a Wednesday, maybe midweek. Um, and of course, I'll always put them up on my on Facebook when the live video is going to take place. But I'll also be putting them up on my YouTube channel. So you can choose any or one or more or all of them. Now, I would suggest that I've talked in previous videos about Stickomancy. Now, stickomancy is it's really good to do it if you've got a book, self-help books. You don't need to read these from cover to cover, put them back on the shelf, never to be read again. I have self-help books. I've also got my own books, which is good. But I will lift them and just flick through them and stop at a place that just your mind sort of says to you, this is the page, open it. And you will file, find something that you want to read about or you need to read about. So do the same with my YouTube channel. Maybe look through, there's 80 of them now or will be by the end of uh, lunchtime. Look through them and think, oh, there's one. Now it might be what I'm wearing, it might be the title, it doesn't matter because you maybe will learn something you need or want at that moment. And I wish everybody well. You've really inspired me by watching me and listening to me. Sometimes I feel like a broken record, but it's extremely inspiring to have you all watching me there. And I'm going to be putting a link up soon on Facebook as to how you can buy my latest. Well, I've got two books coming out. One is on the weight of emptiness, comfort and hope for the loss of a loved one. And that was following the suicide of my son. I finally got round to doing that. But the purpose is not just to tell a bit about my son, but to bring comfort and hope to the many people who have lost a loved one. And as I'm saying this, I've got to do my wee red door, blue door, um, which keeps my sort of tears in check. Um, there are so many people suffering, I think, um, when they do lose a loved one. And my other one is Resilience and Courage, the Key to Endurance. Now, that book is like a toolbox or a toolkit. It's to help you self-reflect. There's exercises, there's stories. And if you have resilience and courage, then you can really learn to endure every day. Particularly, I found this when I lost my son 
And I, I know people say, I can't go on. So others have said to me, this is too much, I, you know. And sadly, I there was some people posted up, I think, on the suicide bereavement group saying that they were told by someone, in fact, in one case, it was a doctor, that after three weeks, they should get over it. Someone else was told two years, surely they should be over it by this time. I'm horrified by that because... You never get over a tragedy, a tragic event. It's not that you're surviving. What you do is you learn to live every day in a different way. And that's why I like the word endurance. So you need to adapt, be resilient and have the courage to learn life, to learn to endure life in a different way. So I hope that helps people and I'll be putting a link up as to where these books can be bought and I will do signed copies for people because everyone has inspired me and the Weight of Emptiness book, people have shared their stories with me of the loss of their loved one and that was, I'm honoured and privileged to include such stories. The the feedback from these people was that actually by writing and sharing their story, it was um, therapeutic for them. And this is just, um, it's just such an honour um, because sharing is caring and helps healing. And thanks, Haley. <laughs> You got the resilience card at Open University. So thank you for sharing that. But I'm prattling on now, but it's a have a smooth day, smooth weekend and virtual hugs to everyone. Thank you again.